Welcome back. You are with Karishma Hemad Singhani and you are watching Dallas Mirror on Desi Plaza TV. And we are in conversation with our guest tonight, Shri Gorji. Welcome back, Gorji. And um, as we were talking just before going for the break, um, mm -hmm. I asked you this question that uh, when you came at that time, the generation and their lookout towards Hinduism or towards their own culture and showing off their culture was different. But nowadays, it's a different story altogether as we see the boom in Hindu community, the way people have come in in America and the, the, the present generation. And at the same time, they have, uh, there is a lot for them to not to uh, feel away from home as far as they're following their religion or culture is concerned. There are a lot of temples, a big community mingling around, celebrating all the festivals. So when you talked about the purpose of starting Sanatan Karma or Dharma, uh, do you still think that is relevant even in today's scenario? Of course I do, and, and I had to give you a couple of things. Uh, first thing is, the <coughs> yes, you're right, there are a lot of temples. There's a lady in New Jersey a couple of years ago wrote an article, mm -hmm. Stop Building Temples. Okay. And I made a copy and I have it with me. Mm -hmm. And what she said was, we're building so many temples, and who's going to go to those temples in the next 20, 25 years, when our generation will be gone, and uh, if you're not doing anything for, to train the new generation, not teaching them, not giving them, all those values, the temple will be empty. And I agree with her. So my goal that we said is, is so relevant that we explain Hinduism scientifically, basically, to, so the youth can also understand this well. Going to temple, chanting mantras, going to puja, youth don't understand what's going on there. I have two kids, they go there, but they don't know what's going on. They just sit there, and then because we force them to go there, they sit there. Now, there are some temples who are making good efforts. I, I see a couple of my friends are. I was in, in locally here in a temple. There were about 40 different kids. They learned the Gita by heart. Mm -hmm. They couldn't chant Gita. They did that in, in, in a few hours. A lot of work went through that. But this is just, just again, it's, and I, once, they, once they know the Gita, I'm sure next will, step would be to understand what that means. To, to know those, those uh, shlokas of the Gita and, and uh, understand the scientific their meaning. So there are a lot, yes, you're right, there are a lot of efforts, but still, youth is still does not understand Hinduism. Because when they go to school, when they meet other people, they, they, they come up with all the other excuses. Hinduism is that, Hinduism is that, and they have no answer. They don't know. Mm -hmm. So that's where Sanatana Kantaram is, is stepping into to explain Hinduism, to explain what the Vedic value, what the Vedic uh, gyan that, that was there to begin with. So they understand that they can explain, they can talk to those people. So yes, it is very relevant and I think we can do a lot, uh, not only just here in US, in India also. Mm -hmm. India things are even getting worse. So we do have to make some efforts to, to promote Hinduism scientifically, not just traditionally, not just doing the puja and chanting mantras and all those, no, explain why we do, what exactly everything, how, uh, it's a practical Hinduism that I'm after. How we can use Hinduism on a daily basis to succeed in our life, to do a better, to, to improve our grades. There are ways to do that. And Hinduism helps to, how to succeed in your life, your personal life, your business life, your professional life, your social life. We have all those things. So, um, <coughs> Uh, my counter question to that would be when you say that we don't need temples, but at the same time you say through Sanatan Karma Dharma, we would like to explain the scientific uh, meaning of our um, uh, rituals, of our whatever we do as Hindu. But don't you think that to do that you need infrastructure? And that kind of uh, need can be fulfilled through temples. Like temples can be used to be those centers who are actually giving, um, you know, uh, who are actually giving them the right knowledge about Hinduism through Sanatan Karma Dharma concept. Well, that's what I meant. I never meant, meant to say that we don't need temples. We okay. need temples, mm -hmm. but temple has to be used for community purpose, for, for, okay. for teaching, guiding mm -hmm. the community, not just become a place of worship where they come and chant some mantras and go home. No, it should be a community center. Mm -hmm. I myself is in, in a process of, of uh, starting something like that. 
uh, a temple based on Vedic values. Temples is, is supposed to be a helping and guiding the community through tough time, through the needs of the people, uh, giving them the right uh, uh, guidance if they have any pro personal problems. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, look at a Hindu community, they are going through now so many divorces taking place. Mm -hmm. Because we don't understand what the, what, the, what the family means. According to Vedic uh, values, husband and wife are one unit. That's what they call Ardhangani, because they're part of one. When I came here, I think when I was 79, I was having a dinner in one of the lady, American lady, white lady, who had visited me in India. So I asked her, okay, what is your way of, of what, how do you define marriage in, in, in American values? So they said, we have two trees growing together. So uh, keeping our own identity. Mm -hmm. I said, well, wow, in Hinduism, we are not two trees. We are tree and, and, a, and, a, and a, you know, the wine goes around the tree. <laughs> the bale, disco, both things. So we are, we, we are one. We, we, both husband and wife, as one unit. So we are not separate anymore. Mm -hmm. That's why in Hinduism, we say, if you, once you're married, you're married for the next seven. Seven <laughs> births, <laughs> absolutely. Right, seven lives. So uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but yeah, uh, that's how it is. And in Hinduism, it says when Brahma created this, he split his body into two, a man and a woman. So that's what it is. And a family is not just a wife and a husband and the kids. Family means the children, the, uh, the, the couple, and the parents. That's what family is in Hinduism. So we have to bring those values to keep the family together. We have to bring those values to teach the kids, the new generation, new, the generation next uh, tomorrow, to understand Hinduism so they can also continue those values. So um, how do you plan to um, attach more people in this movement of yours? I would call it a movement because it's a great uh, concept and vision. And um, you know, directly or indirectly, our generations, the older generations, they have done this without saying anything mm -hmm. by just passing on the information through you know, bringing up their children uh, through Hindu values, you know, in Indian uh, Hindu values. It, it is changing now, as you said, it's uh, um, in India is also, it's, it's worse, getting worse. But uh, how do you see other people uh, getting uh, together with you on this particular um, vision and movement? How do you plan to attach them to this movement? Well, we are starting, we have, we have something that we are, we are already starting. We have starting satsang, which is we are doing every See, I have divided uh, the whole thing, the structure and, and uh, the activities into three parts. Like Hinduism, we have three things, karma, dharma, and jnana. Mm -hmm. And I say everything, if, if one understands what karma means, they understand the Hinduism. Uh, what, and I have defined karma also in a different way, not, not a traditional way. Uh, according to karma, uh, me is, is, is a, your thought, emotions, and action that you do for the good of other people, not for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what karma is. When, when you do something for yourself, then that's not a karma, that's a kukur. So anyway, so we'll talk later detail on those things. But what we're doing is we're starting some activities. So uh, our satsang also is, is a three part. Uh, we have a provocation part where we give some gyan to the people, explain some things that in Hinduism. Then we do some bhakti part and then social part is karma part. So now we're starting also dharma dhyay, which is going to be answering some of the questions that Hinduism has and people have questions about those. Mm -hmm. So we have come up with some answers. And we are starting a, a SKD Gurukul for the youth. Okay. We're starting the youth activities. So we're going to have program for all three parts of the family, the kids, mm -hmm. the young kids, the young generation. And, and, and how, and, and the main thing is how Hinduism, as I told you, Hindu is a practical use of Hinduism. How you can use Hinduism on a daily basis, mm -hmm. on your, on your daily routine, mm -hmm. from waking up to, the, to going to the bed, how the, you can use those values to be more successful in whatever you do during the day. True. So that's how it's going to be. It's not just chanting mantras and doing pujas and uh, having to just know. It's use the Hindu values, the Hindu teaching, the Hindu gyan. Way of life, way basically. Of, it's, it's, it's really a way of life. Way of life, It, it came back later on. Well, Hinduism is not a right name of Hinduism. It's given by somebody else. So it's the Sanatan Dharma, yeah. Sanatan is also is a definition of Hinduism because Sanatan means eternal, no beginning, no end. And in the beginning when, if you believe in, if, if when God created this, we were there. 
True. And the proof <laughs> was uh, all the knowledge came from Vedas and Purans. Mm -hmm. Now people have taken their knowledge and put their name on their stamps on them. Or most of those people who call themselves heavy discovery is discovery invention. No, they were not invention. They all knew Sanskrit. They all learned Vedas and they they took stuff from there and then put their name. So there was a gyan to begin with. There was knowledge to begin with. Just like karma, dharma, and gyan, by the way, when, when somebody wants to start something, mm -hmm. they have to have a plan. They have to have a knowledge, knowledge how to do, what to do, and then they need people to do that. So that's how the whole universe is started. There was a gyan to begin with. Then somebody has to implement that gyan to create mm -hmm. this universe, and then somebody has to protect it or market it. Or, or do. so that's how we have uh, three parts of three types of god that we we usually have: Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Those things can be implemented in our life on a daily basis. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's what the practical Hinduism that I'm, I'm trying to put, uh, uh, bring out to the people and show them, hey, this is how we can do. Mm -hmm. And we all can be <coughs> very successful. And so when we use this on a practical life every daily basis, mm -hmm. then we don't need to really, <coughs> excuse me, have to have a certain ceremony or certain things. No, it, it becomes part of our life. True. So, uh, do you plan to write a book about this in future? <laughs> in fact, uh, I thought of doing that a few years ago, and, and uh, one of my friends told me, "Can write a book first before you go out and start teaching people because they'll share your idea." Yeah. I am in the process of doing that, and mm -hmm. at this point, I don't care if they steal my ideas because my goal is to spread this. Absolutely. Even if they steal, they Even if they steal, at least they're getting something mm -hmm. from it. Absolutely. It. So Absolutely. I, I, I don't want to make this as a business, in, you know, I don't want to convert it into a business, can write a book and make money and all that. That's not my goal. My goal is to let people know, and if they like it, Absolutely. take it, take it. Yeah. So um, I was, when you were talking about uh, teaching, um, about the practical, mm -hmm. um, you know, the way of life of Hinduism, um, uh, one question propped up in my mind. Um, what do you what is your um you know view on the guru uh, parampara in present scenario you, we can see a lot of gurus and people <coughs> are following well, I'm glad certain you, gurus I'm glad and you asked then me that. <laughs> and it is growing actually it's growing now you see a lot of um iit graduates turning swami and <coughs> gurujis and they are preaching about hinduism and a lot of youth is even following them so um how, what do you think about um, in that. in in the way that guru's definition is guru is somebody who shows you the way, mm -hmm. who guides you to the right direction. Guru is not somebody who that you have to worship. Guru is not God. Guru guides you towards the God. Mm -hmm. And I have met one of the, some of those gurus that you're talking about, IIT people, and I, I had discussion. I had uh, lunch with them, and and uh, their goal is again. <coughs> And I don't want to criticize somebody because I don't want to say anything. So this is nothing, nothing against. But I think uh, if you follow the, the real guru tradition and parampara, there are three things, bhiksha, siksha, and diksha. So bhiksha is come for the student that they have to let their ego go and ask for the, for the knowledge. Learning. Mm -hmm. And Guru's job is to, without any bias, without any, uh, without any uh, commercial interest. Uh, yeah, commercial interest. It, it's, they, they, my, as I told you, my father, when he used to teach, coach kids, he never charged anything because he thought mm -hmm. he, Siksha Dan is, is the greatest Dan that you can give. Mm -hmm. Siksha, you didn't create it. You don't own Siksha. You don't own Gyan. You didn't invent mm -hmm. Gyan. Gyan, you learned, you got it, you discovered. You had to give it free to people. Mm -hmm. Don't exploit those, those, and a lot of the gurus I have seen, they exploit these, these uh, 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 their shishya. The first thing the guru has to give is, is the ego. That's what the guru definition in ways that, that mm -hmm. I read. That they have to let few, few things go, and the first thing mm -hmm. that they have to let go is, is the ego. I don't see that going away from those mm -hmm. gurus that you're talking about. Some of those gurus has more ego than anybody as I can see. So yes, uh, there are some good gurus. I don't say that all gurus are bad. So, but choose the guru. If you want to go to a guru, choose them right. Choose them the guru that, that you think will take you to the right direction without expecting anything from you. Mm 
-hmm. Don't become their slaves. Don't become they are not gods. Blind followers. Blind followers. Okay, whatever my, my guru says, hey, this is no. Mm -hmm. Analyze things. Mm -hmm. See how the gurus are. So, in the end, uh, what message would you like to give to a youth? The one thing that I would like to say to the youth is l know who you are, know where you come from. You have come from a very, very rich culture. Don't let it go. Use it for your success. That's what I was saying. That was absolutely very inspiring and informative. Thank you so much, Gorji, once again, talking to us Thank and you giving us your precious much. time. And with this, this uh, episode comes to an end. And I will see you in the next episode of Talis Mirror. Till then, keep watching Desi Plaza TV.